3D scanners, do you need one? And how hard is it to learn to use them? That's right, today we've got a 3D scanner and we're going to try scanning some stuff. Creality was nice enough to send over their Otter Light 3D scanner today. It's a wireless 3D scanner that offers tons of functionality inside of a really nice sleek package. And it's pretty affordable for 3D scanners. I'm talking about four lens stereo vision, 30 FPS scanning, and a 0.05 millimeter accuracy. Does any of that make any sense to you? It doesn't to me, so let's learn a little bit. Once we've figured out what we're doing, we're gonna try scanning a couple of things today. And then finally, I'm gonna try and apply what I've learned to complete a project that I've been needing to do for quite some time. My hope is to show you if this scanner is something that could be useful for you, or even if it's useful for a beginner in general, because I've never used one before. So let's give it a shot. Okay, for starters, opening the box is an excellent experience. We're not gonna spend too much time unboxing it, but just know everything comes inside of this super sweet package that does well to organize everything and hold everything so you don't lose all the components and accessories as soon as you open them and take them out of the box. Also, it's pretty nicely padded, so I imagine it keeps the device pretty safe too, which is maybe more important than the organizational factor, but I got a lot of stuff, I like the organizational factor. Now, as I understand it, this scanner can use infrared as well as blue light to scan its subjects. And if you're going the blue light route, I think you need to use these little registration dots here. But I plan to keep it simple for my first go around, so we're not going to be needing these quite yet. Otherwise, we've got the device itself. The four lens system that Creality calls Stereo Vision is on this top portion here, and that's then fastened to the base slash handle deal here. Both of the pieces are powered and they communicate by connecting them via USB-C cable, but there's also these little pin contact deals where the base is secured to the camera unit. So it's all kind of hooked together a whole bunch and the two pieces talk to each other to make 3D scanning things happen, I guess. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is just scanning using the phone. I think you can do this without using the computer, I'm not 100% certain. I did just get it connected to the app for the first time, which when I tried this previously, the handset ran out of battery. Charged everything up, got it all plugged in. There's power pins connecting the top part and the handle together, so it's odd that you have to plug it in, but that must just be for data transfer. It's all working now. It's connected to the app, even though it said that the password setup failed. Let's see if we can scan something. So once I had everything connected together properly, the app on the phone had recognized the device, it was time to do our first scan. Creality includes this little colored porcelain owl dude in the kit along with this turntable. I figured this would be as good of a place to start as any, so I set about scanning it. Well, that didn't work. This is initiated from the phone and the app does super well, allowing you to monitor what you're doing as you're doing it. It tells you if you need to move closer or further, and it shows you in real time as you capture more geometry data and stuff. It's all pretty straightforward in terms of scanning. I've never scanned anything before, but this seems pretty straightforward. There are different size options to allow for the correct resolution to be captured, depending on the size of the model that you're gonna be scanning. And you can specify what kind of subject you're planning to scan. So all these things are pretty good without being overwhelming, and I look forward to diving into these different options a little bit more as I get more comfortable scanning things. But for now, have a look at our first scan. Once we've captured our geometry data, there's a few things you can do inside of the app still before you have to change your workflow into something else. There's an editor of sorts that allows you to clean up your mesh, and for my first attempt here, it looks like it picked up some background stuff. The Creality Scan app has this erase function here, which makes it pretty easy to clean up these little bits around the edge of the turntable where my finger got scanned. Perhaps this isn't what you would want to do in the workflow long term, but I love that this is possible without leaving the app. You can do these quick little touch-ups right inside of the app just after you complete your scan. Very cool, Creality. Now once you've finished your mesh and you've kind of got it where you want it, what do you do then? Well for me, I've got a specific project that I'm trying to accomplish using this scanner. You see, this microwave has been missing its vent cover for a little while. It fell off and broke one day and I just never got around to doing anything about it. So today's the day. The thing's a simple rectangular shape and really I probably could just measure a bunch and like draw something up that way. But we've got a scanner. So we're gonna scan it. And it'll be interesting trying to accomplish this task using a different method. Will it save time? Probably not because I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll learn a valuable skill and then next time, it'll probably save time. 
or it won't, I don't know. The learning curve may be too steep for me. Let's see if this thing even helps me here. To start, I took the scanner to the microwave and selected the large object option in the app. I tried the medium one to see if the extra resolution would be beneficial, but the scanner kind of lost its mind because this isn't a medium sized object, it's a large size object according to the scanner. So I stuck with the large object setting. The scanner didn't miss a beat. Typically 3D scanners can struggle with metal or reflective surfaces, but the little otter didn't even break a sweat on this. I was pretty impressed with the preliminary results and really, I've got to say, this is all going quite a bit better than I ever would have expected. Now that we've got a successful mesh, we're going to need to process it a little bit so we can get what we need out of it to make our model. But before we do that, what the heck is this scanner and why is it cool? Well, there's a lot of features to cover, but in order for any of them to make any sense, we need to know a few things about 3D scanners. In my limited knowledge, there's a few different types of scanners. Some require a powder spray to be on the object, and others need these little registration markers we talked about earlier. Some scanners don't need either of those things, depending on the model that it's scanning. The Creality Outer Light does a few cool things that promise to help me as I figure out how to scan things, because I have no idea what I'm doing. For starters, even when scanning something dark in color or metal, the scanner doesn't need any of that powder spray. Typically you would for those kinds of subjects. Also, the scanner can capture color information as well as the object's physical geometry, which seems pretty cool. But the thing I'm most excited about are the wireless capabilities, the true wireless capability of this scanner. The outer light can work with the Creality Scan program on your computer, yes, but it also wirelessly communicates with the Creality Scan app on your phone to track and store your scans. That means you don't need to plug into the computer to save your mesh and track down your object. You can just do it all from your phone, it stores the information locally, and then you can move it over to the computer when you're ready to do that step. As long as your object's inside of the 20 to 2000 millimeter range of its capabilities, you're good to go. There's a lot more to get into, but I think I'm going to continue showing you rather than telling you. So let's move on in the workflow here and hop into the Creality Scan app on the computer. This is made super simple thanks to the interconnected ecosystem across the app on your phone and computer. The program on the computer allows you to import scans straight from the iPhone app without fuss. And I like that. You like that? I know you like that. With the mesh imported, we can fiddle with some of the settings. I played around a bit and discovered these different layers here on the side before finally editing the mesh to only include the surfaces that I was after. I really only needed this area because I was going to use it as reference for my CAD work that I planned to do. As long as I could see the points on the side here for the clippy tabby deals that hold the thing on there, that should really be all I need to get going. Those are the points that I'm going to be picking up and that's what I need the accuracy for. And then after a bit of messing around, I actually got something pretty suitable that I could then export. From there, I simply brought it into Onshape so I can see about drawing up some rectangles, baby. Now, unfortunately, when I brought this into Onshape, I made a mistake. I should have used millimeters instead of inches, so my model was like way big. Like way too big. But I did all my CAD work anyway and roughed the model in a little bit because I had all the reference material and I figured I could just scale it as I needed. So finally once I had a prototype that I was comfortable with testing, I resized the model by a factor of 0 .039 which converted it into the correct scale. I ran a tape measure across the area that I scanned to make sure my math was correct. And after measuring the model inside of Bamboo Studio, I found that the model was 30 inches and that matched what my tape measure said. I know you're impressed with my incredible math skills, most people are impressed. I know basic math. Now I had a model that was based on the mesh that I scanned, and I knew the scale was correct. The next obstacles that I needed to overcome, however, were to do with the size of the thing I scanned. It's way too big for my build plate. Also, I wanted to print a test piece of my model before committing to the full thing, because of the size and time that it would take. So I came up with a plan. I decided to use the split function inside of the slicer to cut off the flat face on the bottom. This would leave me with the rim, which I could chop up a little bit more to get the reference for these pickup points for the clippy tabbies. This would use less material, it would also print faster and allow me to check the dimensions of everything that I had to make sure everything was going to fit correctly. Once I could verify those dimensions were correct, I'd then go back and refine the tabs where the thing hooks in. Also, I needed to add a bunch of vent holes on the front face, so the thing would actually allow for air to pass through it. But of course I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take it one step at a time and chop this up, print the testers, and make sure everything's gonna fit first. So the testers printed well, the dimensions were correct, and now it was time to fine-tune the model a little bit. 
I moved over to a new sketch so I was using the correct scale and I went about creating a more refined part. I broke it into three pieces to make it printable and I took some time to make sure everything made it up well. These parts are going to fit together with a super simple tongue and groove setup, so I left a bit of space at the mating areas to allow a little bit of room for error if necessary. But overall I think it's going to be a winner. After I printed a couple of pieces to test the hook tabby fitment and the tongue and groove fitment, I was able to adjust the model a bit more slightly to fit the microwave a little bit better. And with that we've got a finished piece that completes my microwave using the power of 3D scanning. And it wasn't even difficult. And I don't know anything about 3D scanning. Legitimately I'm very surprised. Incredible. So that's my first foray into 3D scanning and I plan to do a lot more of this in the future. I feel like it went over pretty well even though I probably picked a project that's a little bit too big for a beginner. Also, you could argue that this project didn't need a 3D scanner at all, and you could do some measurements and stuff like that. But I think it went well, and it was a great way to explore this technology and figure out a new way to solve a problem. And that's what we've done. We've solved a problem. Now for the Creality Otter Light specifically, this was provided by Creality and Creality sponsoring this video, so I appreciate that. But I could say the thing sucks if I wanted to. Luckily it doesn't. I actually like it. It's a pretty great scanner. I've only ever used one scanner, but this was super easy. I can't stress enough how user-friendly this process was and how happy I am to have been able to figure it out. I've only had this thing for a week and I was able to get some legitimate 3D scans done. That's pretty good. So the Otter Light, it's affordable. The software is user-friendly. I feel like my results are a testament to how well the thing performs despite my lack of knowledge or understanding on how to use it properly. So check the link below if you want more information on that, and hit up our Patreon if you want to join us on our quest to do this content thing full time. Also check out keoprints.com because you probably need yourself a new shirt, hat, or hoodie, or all of them. They're super cool. Thanks again to Creality for sponsoring this video and sending over the Creality Otter Light 3D Scanner. It's been super cool. Bye.